MIT. And uh, actually, have any of you been at the Media Lab before today? Right. So you know, one person, would, so almost nobody's been around at the lab before. So you know, the Media Lab fills this whole building, and it's, the Media Lab's been here for almost 25 years now, and it's a place that is exploring creative uses of new technology. There are people here doing all types of things, redefining what the newspaper would be in the interactive age, rethinking computers and music, and how you might have people create new types of musical instruments you know, with new technologies. There's a wide range of ways of thinking about how new technology can help people understand the world in new ways, to express themselves in new ways. In our group, we focus especially on how new technology can you know, help us rethink approaches to learning and education. Um, as you know, a lot of it is in some ways inspired by the way the Media Lab itself works. You know, here at the lab, we focus a lot on having the researchers and the students here are constantly designing things and creating things, where they're creating a new type of you know, computerized musical instrument or a new type of sensor system. People are always designing things and creating things and inventing things. And we think that makes this not just a good research lab, but a good place for learning, because we found that people really do a lot of their best learning when they're actually designing and creating things. And it gets us frustrated when we go out and we go to the school down the street or community center down the street, and we don't see those same type of activities. We don't see enough of kids being given the opportunity to design, create, collaborate. So we're always trying to think about how we can help use new technologies in a way that will help support those types of educational approaches. Um, as we've looked around, we've taken a lot of our inspiration uh, from the way children learn in kindergarten. That's why we call our group the Lifelong Kindergarten Group. Because we think a lot of things actually work very well in kindergarten. Uh, and you know, we think that in kindergarten, kids do spend a lot of time designing, creating things, whether it's building towers out of blocks, making pictures with finger paints and crayons. And we think they learn a lot in the process, and they learn to develop as creative thinkers. And what you know, our hope is, is to help spread those ideas. Again, lifelong kindergarten means take those ideas and spread that approach to learning to learners of all ages, uh, but help people learn more advanced ideas, work on more advanced projects. And that's where we think new technologies can fit in. If we use them right, they can take this kindergarten approach and extend it to learners of all ages. As we think about that, what do we mean by the kindergarten approach? Uh, we think about it in terms of what we sometimes call the creative learning spiral. And we think about that the best you know, uh, innovations often come from this ever spiraling activity where people start by coming up with ideas then creating something based on those ideas. It's not just a matter of having an idea and talking about it. It's creating something, whether it's creating the physical world or creating things you know, on a computer screen or creating a story that you share with people. But it has to be making something. And once you make something, you can then experiment with it, try it out, play with it. Uh, and then you get a better understanding of it through that experimenting and playing with it. When you create something, you get to share with it. One reason we like to externalize our ideas in terms of creations is that it's then easier to share with other people and to have them make new suggestions about, you know, oh, why didn't you do it that way? Or wouldn't it be great if it also did this? And those suggestions from others lead you to reflect upon things and about getting new ideas, and then it lets you imagine new things, and the spiral continues, with an ever-expanding spiral of getting new, new ideas. So as we develop new technologies, we're always trying to think about how can we support this process better? Because although blocks and finger paints are great for kindergarten, if we want to help people learn new things and work on more advanced projects, we need new types of tools to support this. Now, actually, we get frustrated with a lot of the technology in classrooms today because we think that a lot of technology in classrooms is not used this way. So, in fact, we're not blind supporters of technology in classrooms. We actually get frustrated and we think a lot of it's not used very effectively. Uh, so, and, and sometimes they're even more sympathetic, sympathetic with people who are critical of technology in education because a lot of times they're critical for the right reasons. That, Technology is being used just to perpetuate some you know, outmoded approach to education. So we really want to make sure that technology is helping to move in new directions to support this, you know, this you know, vision of learning and education where people are you know, constantly designing, creating, experimenting, exploring, because we think those are going to be the key attributes for, for being successful and satisfied and happy you know, in the 21st century. That's what's going to, you know, really going to make the difference is you know, people, that, you know, being able to be a creative thinker is something that's going to make the biggest difference, that it's not a matter of knowing certain facts or even having certain skills, uh, but the ability to you know, think and act creatively, to be able to come up with innovative solutions to unexpected problems. Because if one thing is for sure is we know that we're going to be confronted with unexpected problems in the future, 
and we just need people to grow up being prepared to deal with those types of you know, unexpected situations. So we're always thinking about that and the tools that we develop and the, and the settings that we create. We, we both develop tools, we try them out in the world, we set up new educational contexts to, to try out these ideas. And Scratch grows, you know, grows out of a tradition uh, of doing this. You know, some of you know we've worked for you know, many years with the Lego company, worked on project, products like the Lego Mindstorms, robotic construction kits, where kids could build things in the physical world, give them programs to make them move and interact in different ways. Uh, with Scratch, we tried to take some of those same ideas, but really tried to see how can we let people take creations on the screen, in the virtual world, in the online world, and have more control of, over creating things and bringing things to life you know, in the you know, online virtual world. Because again, we get frustrated. We too often see too many kids today, even if many people talk about them as being digital natives or being you know, so comfortable with the screen, Generally, it just means they know how to point and click and browse and chat. And although, again, there's you know, some value to that, that's not what we think is most important for truly being fluent today. It's not just about pointing, clicking, browsing, and chatting, but it's about designing, creating, experimenting, and collaborating. So we're trying to see how can we really you know, provide opportunities to let people not just be interacting on the screen, uh, but being able to design and create things. And that's what Scratch had in mind. It grew out of a lot of the work we did. We have a network of after school centers that we helped start called Computer Clubhouses, designed for young people from low income communities where we saw the real need that young people wanted to be able to design their own you know, interactive stories, make interactive artwork, create interactive games, but they didn't have good tools to do it. Uh, there were good tools for doing text on the screen, putting up blogs, there were good tools for manipulating images in Photoshop, but there weren't good tools for making dynamic, interactive things. And then to be able to share it and learn with one another. So that was what was really behind our thinking as we got started with Scratch.